Hey everybody, it's me, Mark of Menlock Sings, and today we're going to talk about Lomo's Kickstarter campaign, the Diana Instant. And yeah, it was funded successfully, like in, in earlier this year, and we already had our hands on the prototype of that camera. And now let's take a look how the final product looks like and what's in the package, actually. So here we have it. The final product of that Kickstarter campaign. Nothing, or not, let's say not nothing, but not a lot changed from the prototype to this thing. So I think Lomo is with that Kickstarter campaign kind of more trying to find if there is enough audience for that camera, not actually like funding the idea and developing it, because like the prototype was actually pretty. At the same point, that camera is like the uh, like the hinge at the back is maybe a little bit better. Um, the viewfinder I finally got. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we got the lens to it, which is also pretty good. Really looking fine. You got that mirror in front to see yourself. So the product is finished and it's already for sale. So if you still want to get one before Christmas, you have the chance to buy one. I think it should also ship before Christmas if you order pretty soon. But what is this camera about? And like, why is it different to other, other instant cameras? And why should you buy this camera? Why shouldn't you buy that camera? So for starters, the Diana is a kind of a Lomo thing, which you already existed for the film type, like for Type 100 film. And also there it was a really special camera, because it's like really plasticky, easy, uh, not a lot of functions, but you could capture some, some amazing images with it. Looking at that, like, I also did a few pictures with it, I already did like in, in the, like, pro with the prototype and I got a lot of cool pictures. And I'm surprised on how good I, it's actually, or like how easy it is to actually manage to expose the image right. On the bottom of the camera, we have a few different modes to, to look at. So we have these few different modes. And so it's sunny, cloudy, and really cloudy, <laughs> and pinhole. And these are the different modes the camera offers. And actually, with these modes, you can get pretty much everywhere except indoors. And that's pretty amazing. Like I shot just so, like I was walking around a little bit, just, just took like something like that. Like that's out my test subject, but it looks really good. That actually was taken with the glass lens. That's the special lens you need to buy. It's this one here, Diana Glass, that's finally back in stock. It wasn't for a long time. And that's a really good lens for the camera. Also the one with the least vignetting. And that's one thing that kind of annoys me on the Diana. I know it's kind of the Diana st style, but if you look at that image here, you can really see like how big the image circle is. So the image circle or like of a lens is actually the, the size of like what the the lens covers like with its image. And normally that image circle here for that one would be fine for a 35 millimeter camera, but not for a like medium format camera or instant film like Instax Square. But Lomo still goes with it, and like it gives it that Diana F feel. In my opinion, it's a strong vignetting, and if you're like fine with that, it's okay. But if you don't like vignetting, that camera may be the wrong thing for you, because like every image will have vignetting. As you can see, we have vignetting, vignetting, vignetting on a double exposure, and like yeah, it's on every picture. You can't get rid of that vignetting. That's something you have to keep in mind. Also, you're guessing the exposure, kind of. So you just have these four modes, and it's not the perfect exposure, and you kind of need to watch out. So it's a manual camera, and if you are not really good with guessing that and like knowing where to put it, because even if it's like kind of cloudy, maybe it's still too dark for cloudy, or it's maybe too dark, too bright for cloudy. So that's something you need to figure out. So. I would say the learning curve or like the, the amount of images on the Diana that you put out without like having the right thing for you is kind of high. But still the camera is fun to use. It's a bit bulky and I hate that the viewfinder is on a yeah special thing here, that one. Uh, I would love the viewfinder to be in the camera but I know they had like problems because actually the film gets thrown out here in front and the viewfinder is here. so. I know why they have had to make it like this, so actually the film would come out like this. Otherwise, like, framing with the viewfinder is kinda okay. You get a lot of additional stuff to it, you have that hot shoe, 
which is pretty cool if you want to use a flash sync or something. That's something I will definitely look into closer um, to sh shoot the camera in studio. Just put the little sync here. Let's see, if I can just plug it in. Then you have it in there, and then you can easily shoot with your remote, or you get you actually get the flash, and you're able to use the the flash they give you with. So a lot of different versions you can use the camera. So that's that's one thing you have the camera. And other the other thing is like there's a lot of different lenses, and if you already have a Diana camera, you can already use that lenses with the the camera. So here you can see that's the the camera. Just to see the exposure mechanism again, and you can see. So if I closely patch it down to that, you can see moving inside. That's just pinhole. There's nothing going through. So you have to keep in mind, even if the camera is turned off right now, you still take images or expose the image actually. It won't throw out the image, but you expose it. So for double exposures, it's kind of okay. If I turn it on, the camera, and then reset, the engine starts and would actually throw out an image if the film would still have some frames inside. So yeah, that's the regular lens we have here that comes with the camera. And then I have the glass lens here, the Diana glass lens which is a little bit better manufactured and we're gonna put that on. It has a little dot on the side, also like here. And let's see. It's kind of confusing. Yeah, like this. Okay. And now we have the, the glass lens on the camera. Yes. Uh, focusing on the lenses always works in the front here, that, which is interesting and a little bit wobbly because you have to Grab if you have really big fingers, you maybe get troubles like fiddling around here, but otherwise, you should be fine. Let's change it pretty easy. So, yeah, that's kind of the basic of the camera. It has a few functions, uh, but didn't, didn't change too much from the prototype we had in our hands. So, if you haven't seen that video, you can still watch it up there, and I'll also talk a lot about it. But at the end, you need some Instax square fill. The camera and you're ready to shoot. It's really simple broken down process. That's a benefit for a lot of people but that vignetting is a really negative part for me. I, I will, but like if you get that glass lens the vignetting goes down a lot as you can see here and uh, the, the sharpness is on point like that lenses this lens is really sharp it works out great and you can focus on infinity like you can with the SQ6. So I see a lot of potential that beats the SQ6 because I have like better exposed images than with the SQ6. But yeah, but what is the, what is the but? Um, so you should definitely check that camera out if you're interested in the Diana. And if you already have a Diana, it would be a perfect addition if you want to get into instant photography. You also get some other um, additional things like a filter and stuff like that, for color filters. First thing you will lose, like they're somewhere back there on the shelf. Like don't even think about using them. Let's just show you how to load a film. That's easy. We grab our old film, put the camera down, grab the new pack of film, the film pack with this side, just facing down, let it fall in, close the door. The camera's already turned on, so you can see that here. There's multi-exposure mode, so if you want to take multi-exposures it's easy. Just go to multi-exposure or just turn it on, off, take images and then go back and you turn it on and then you just take first image so it throws out the dark slide. Perfect. That one's here. I'm really, actually really busy. This video will go up today. <laughs> I just did the video. And tomorrow we'll have a live stream about Safe Pack Film and next week will be another video and another one. And I'm like super stressed with Christmas. But Diana F. If you're into Diana and Lomography, it's a great choice. If you're not into that vignetting or that experimental photography, think twice about buying that camera. Maybe it's not the best camera for you. So yeah, also has a bulb mode on top, forgot that. Hope you liked the video, if you did, thumbs up, if you didn't, thumbs down. Uh, if you want to see more content, subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you next time. The photo critique thing, which I was talking about in the last video, is still up, so if you want to send me some photos for critiques, send them to critique at analogsings.com and I will consider them putting them into the basket of like critiques. And I'm planning to do a video. I hope I can manage to make it till next week, but don't be mad if it 
it doesn't work out. But like, don't worry, you're still in the mail order. I have everything organized and I will take a look at it. See you next week. Bye.